So U Street may be known for its nightlife, but there's a new event in town celebrating the day life of the area too. Join U Street Main Festival for the first ever Camp Cardozo, a health-centered, family-friendly festival. The day will have fun workout classes, games, go-go music, of course, and obstacle courses. And make sure to stick around for the Foamberry Foam Party. It's all being put on by the beloved local community engagement nonprofit, District Bridges. So check it out at districtbridges.org slash events slash camp dash Cardozo. Today on CityCast DC, what's happening with converting DC's office buildings, rats in DuPont Circle, and swimming in the Anacostia River? To get into all of it, I'm talking to CityCast Julia Karen and Ash Durbin. <laughs> Today's Tuesday, July 2nd. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. Ash, I feel like rats come up a lot on the show. (laughs) It's a topic that I am at once repulsed by, but also invested in. Mm-hmm. What What's going on? Do I need to stay at a DuPont Circle? This sounds, for me, is like worst nightmare situation. What these people are going through at the flats at DuPont Circle. Yeah, they just started noticing rats. The internal survey that they took, 59 tenants have seen rats in their apartments. Wait, 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 wait. 59. How big is this building? Is it like 100 like units, like 200? I don't know the exact units, but like I looked it up on Zillow or whatever, and it's huge. It's a giant building. That being said, 46 haven't seen any rats in their apartment. So that's like, I don't know, I would over half of the surveyed people have seen rats, which is, it's like, I don't know. It's one thing if you see rats like around, but when they're in your apartment, dude, like, That's so scary. So I was looking on Reddit to find out more information about this on the DC subreddit. And something that really surprised me was that we're not just talking about mice or small rats. People had pictures of these rats and they were possibly some of the biggest rats I'd ever seen in DC. So I think it's like Fox 5 has the videos of like the night cams, like which are typically used for like making sure your dog is okay or whatever. Right. But the night cams of these rats just sneaking across the kitchen floors. It just gives me the ick. So like, is management doing anything? Are they like going to go to the pipes? Are they telling people to like, hey, we're going to fumigate? Like, is there a strategy here or not so much? A resident quoted in the article says that management sent out one notice. They were doing pest control thing and they were trying to plug up some of the areas they were getting in. But I think that might have ended up being the issue because they plugged one of the holes. And I think the rats ended up finding another way and went upstairs. So like I said, like with rats, a lot of times, like once they're in, it's tough. I mean, like you said, Bridget, like, like residents have been kind of taking it into their own hands. I saw like one of the articles, a guy was describing it as cat sized rats. And I saw a picture and he was putting out his own traps and he said he would leave them out in common areas or something to like show management how bad the problem was. And it was huge rat. And I don't know, as someone with rat experience, like I can attest to, it's so scary. Like every day you're dealing with rats, it's just like, it's, you're always on edge. Every little noise, you're like, what was that? Rat, 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 rat. It's a thing, it's a thing. (laughs) I had mice in my apartment last year and The mice were tiny, but I would be like every little thing. And you could like hear them in the walls too. I imagine like people can like hear them in the pipes. And it's just like knowing that exists. Like obviously they're animals that are built for survival. Their entire goal is like eat food, breed, live. That's it. That's the list. Which honestly, like what a great life. But at the same time, like boy, does that freak me out to think like, oh my God, in the pipes. I would never have another day of peace or rest. If somebody like, how would like... Imagine laying in bed and your partner, like, touches you lightly. I feel like I would punch him in the face. Like, get off of me. I would never know another night of peace. Dude, I've heard and seen experiences of people dealing with rats and rafters falling down on people. Uh. Like, it, it really does mess with your head in a terrifying way. And part of the issue, too, is some of the residents were saying that they 
put out poison. And then what happens sometimes when you poison the rats is they eat the poison and then they die like in the walls. Mm. So then you just have like the dead rat stench coming through, which is like probably better than having living rats running around. Is it? But the, like you're paying for that with probably the worst smell of all time. I feel terrible for these people in this apartment, like especially if you're stuck. And I looked it up on, on Zillow, like I said, and it's like, these apartments are not cheap. I mean, I've never been to the flats, but I know the building pretty well. I feel like it's like a pretty recognizable building in D.C. I think of it as luxury. What are the rents like? I just took a quick glance and like studio apartments started at 2200 So it's Holy like, smokes. I was saying 2200 for a studio and there's rats running around, dude. I would be livid, dude. And then people were talking about, they're like, yeah, like I started sleeping on my balcony because I was too scared, like all this stuff. And, you know, if you're paying exorbitant amount of rent, like just to be like scared of rats the whole time, not ideal. But like I said, there seems to be some movement towards fixing it. The Fox 5 article says some tenants have already gone to small claims courts. I don't know if there's avenues of this Office of the Tenant Advocate. DC Bar, I think, has a bunch of like housing rights stuff, the DC Tenants Rights Center. So I don't know. It seems like there's going to be movement. I think it's also important to like document this stuff when it's in your apartment and you're renting, like it's to have proof. A lot of them have been taking pictures and the videos, like we said. Um, and then, yeah, just reaching out to housing lawyers and stuff can help you know what your rights are in a situation because nobody should have to live with rats, man. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, in addition to calling like the DC bar or like the Tenants Rights Center or 311, you should listen to our episode with Gerard Brown, who is the rat czar, and he will tell you, hopefully, ways to keep your apartment and your streets rat free. Summer has begun in the Capitol Riverfront area down by the Washington Navy Yard and over into Buzzard Point. So we are collaborating with the Capitol Riverfront Business Improvement District to offer a few insider tips to help you make the most of your summer. First off, Friday night concerts are now underway at the Yards Park Boardwalk. The concert series is taking a break for the July 5th weekend, but we'll be back in full swing Friday, July 12th, running through August 23rd with local performers. Or stay cool with activities along the river, whether fishing or kayaking out of Ballpark Boathouse or hopping on a tiki boat like Whitlow's on water. There is truly something for everyone. Visit www.capitalriverfront.org for the full events calendar. Hi, I'm David Plotz, CEO of CityCast. Or, as I can say now, thanks to a few weeks with Babbel, Hola, soy David Plotz, el jefe de CityCast. What if in 2024 you got a little bit better every day? When you're learning a new language with Babbel, that's exactly what you're doing. And if Babbel can help me start speaking a new language in just three weeks, imagine what you could do in a full year. I got started with Babbel because I realized that my girlfriend, who's a native Spanish speaker, and my son, who's an AP Spanish, were conspiring against me, or I thought they were conspiring against me in Spanish. I wanted to know what they were talking about. And now, thanks to literally just a few weeks of Babbel, I'm starting to be able to eavesdrop. It is rare that something so fun and simple, and Babbel is super fun and very simple, is also so useful. So here's a special limited time deal for CityCast listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for CityCast listeners at babbel.com slash citycast. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash citycast. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash citycast. Rules and restrictions may apply. And for folks who might be fleeing their apartment because of the rats, any updates on whether or not all of those empty office buildings in D.C. might someday maybe be residences where folks can live? Yeah. So one of the things that we've been covering over the course of the last year, as people might or might not know, is that downtown has a lot of office buildings and those office buildings aren't filled with workers. And that is a problem because a lot of D.C.'s tax revenue comes from those office buildings. One of the programs that the mayor instituted was basically efforts to try to convert a bunch of those office buildings into residences. D.C. 
in an article, it stated it had one of the highest per capita conversion rates, which is great for us. But there's actually a new program for some of those other office buildings that they don't want to turn into residential. So it's called the Central Washington Activation Program. It basically provides this tax abatement for converting offices into like hotels and like retail shops and restaurants. Fun fact, this is a part of DC's 2025 budget that passed the council. And all of these properties have to undergo construction or reconstruction or alteration or renovation that results in the conversion of the property from primarily office use to non-office. So in addition to like moving because of rats, you could also move to a nearby office area because like maybe there's a good restaurant there. We're going to see. Are these renovations or is it like these buildings going to start getting knocked down? We're going to see like a lot of like from the bottom construction or is this just fully they just like go in and they have the building and they like change it from the inside out or like they fully knock it down so the short answer is that depends there was this round table that happened it was called the dc state of the market it was hosted by BizNow. we've had emily wishingrad on the show shout out to emily but basically in the panel the panelists said that like the city must also push to bolster the demand for its offices to keep some of the downtown as thriving as a commercial hub some of these offices are gonna get like gutted and converted but a lot of people on this panel were like one of these guys said like there has to be a more wholesale massive redevelopment of downtown and i mean literally tearing down whole blocks of old office buildings um so yes like some of them might just be like gutted if it's easy and the piping and the stanchions and everything and the outline of the building works but like some of these like they might have to be completely torn down in order to make this happen dang which is kind of wild it is wild yeah. it's wild to imagine that it would just like it could just like look completely different in however many years it takes to take down these buildings and start over and i actually think that's part of it i think when we talk about downtown revitalization part of it will probably have to be a wholesale rethinking of what we think of as downtown, what we think of why people go there, what do they do when they get there. I think unless we really holistically rethink all of that, I don't know if this is going to be a successful venture. I think the idea of like, just get people back to offices, that's clearly not working the way that people kind of maybe hoped it did. And so I think it really has to be a wholesale new rethinking and new restructuring around what we think of when we think of downtowns. Yeah, one of the interesting stats that I saw was that the D.C. office market has a record vacancy of 21.6% at the end of the first quarter. So, like, basically a fifth of all of D.C.'s office buildings are just, like, empty, which is kind of wild. Like, obviously the push is that you hope the feds come back and that's a big driver, but it's clear that's not happening. And so part of this, like, tax abatement program is that, like, the tax abatements get subject to a cap over the course of the next couple of years. And a bunch of these properties like are in what is called Central Washington, which has like a set defined comprehensive plan. But basically this area is like as far west as the West End, North DuPont Circle and like Noma, which I don't think we think of as like downtown, quote unquote. And like as far east as Union Station and like a block south of L'Enfant Plaza and Federal Center Southwest. It's also possible it could expand into portions of Shaw and the 8th Street Northeast Corridor and Capitol Hill. So, like, when we're thinking of downtown, it's clear that, like, this vision isn't just, like, central downtown metro center area. It's, like, a lot bigger than we think. There's already an abatement for office to residential, correct? Yes. And to be clear, like, those two things are separate things. Like, this is one program, and then the office to residential is a separate initiative. Two sides of the same coin, but we'll see. Local businesses are the lifeblood of a community. That's why at CityCast, we love introducing you to so many of them. And when it comes to supporting local businesses financially, no other bank does it like Eagle Bank. With both business and personal banking expertise, Eagle Bank has invested in our community for more than 25 years. They know the people, the culture, the history, the challenges, and most importantly, they believe that lifting local businesses and nonprofits lifts everyone who lives here. And isn't that the kind of bank you want behind your business? Become an Eagle Bank business client and you'll partner with a dedicated local banking expert. And because they know our market so well, 
They also know your customers and your competition and can tailor individual financial products and services that drive results. They're straightforward and transparent, always a phone call away. And they're fast decision makers, so you won't miss out on opportunities. The health of our communities is tied to our businesses, and Eagle Bank believes in doing all they can to keep local businesses soaring. So it is still disgustingly hot out, as we talked about in our Things to Do in July guide. Bridget, am I going to be able to swim in the Anacostia after all these years? Because I grew up swimming in the Potomac, and that was an interesting way to deal with my health back then. But what about the Anacostia? Can I swim there now, please? Possibly? You could swim anywhere if you want it. If you're, if you're <laughs> if you bold enough, and you can swim in anything. I heard this at the inaugural Anacostia River Splash was supposed to be happening on Saturday. And my first thought was, ew. And guess what? It didn't happen. It's been postponed for the second time. Can you guess why? It's gross. <laughs> to be fair, I swam in the Potomac growing up and, and Lord swam in the Potomac to be one with the river. So like, how gross are we talking? Like, how bad could it possibly be? Well, the whole event was postponed for the second time because the water quality samples detected that E. coli levels were well above D.C.'s recreational standard. So, yeah, don't swim in it. However, they do say that they're going to try again on July 13th. We'll see. How much could it possibly change? And Yeah, wait. <laughs> I mean, that's my thing. I feel that if you've had to postpone it twice, maybe this isn't a great idea. Yeah, it's a wrap. Yeah. They did it in Baltimore recently, and I looked at some of the pictures, and I just thought, why would someone want to do this to themselves? But people did it. People, they, they, they made it happen. So if, in fact, on July 13th, people are able to swim for this event, this would be the first time in 50 years plus that residents were able to swim in the Anacostia River. Since 1971, swimming in D.C.'s rivers and streams has been illegal because of the bad water quality. So you're saying so you're saying my trips to the Potomac as a youth were not only ill advised, but possibly illegal. Well, it kind of depends, because in 2018, the Department of Energy and Environment did enact an amendment that allowed some permitted swim events, like like different events in D.C. that you could maybe splash in it. But it sounds like you're just like on your own going to swim in the Potomac might not have been (laughs) one of those events that was sanctioned by the city. Sweet. Good to know. Good to know that my youth was not ruined by swimming in the Potomac. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask. I guess I feel like I know the answer for Julia. But Ash, would you swim in the Anacostia River? If this event goes forward, would you do it? Honestly, like... (laughs) That honestly (laughs) was phrased as like, I'm thinking about it. Like, I mean, similar to Julia, like I grew up swimming in... Like, Scott's Run was like my favorite place of all time, which is like just over the line into Virginia. It's like a beautiful waterfall and like like a little creek rivery thing like runs into the Potomac. And it was the nicest spot. I went every summer and just like great place to like hang out with friends, like have some beers and like feel like you're like out in the countryside swimming. And then like recently they're like, no, that place is disgusting. Like how have you, I can't believe you guys have been swimming there. So it's like the damage is already done. And if they say it's clean, I would consider it. I don't know. I do love swimming in natural bodies of water. I think I would do it like one time just to say that I had done it. Right. You know what I mean? But I don't know if I would want to do it like right off the bat, especially because they're like, it's fine. No, it's not. It's fine. Just kidding. Like, let's I want like six months of them being like, it's okay before I get in, I think. Yeah. But Bridget, you're you're firmly team no swim. Y'all are, of course not. <laughs> like, I'm not going to that. <laughs> like, if you're someone who thinks it's a good idea, love that for you. Let me know how it goes. Ash, if you get in, I wish you the best. Would love to continue doing this podcast with you, so I hope it goes well. <laughs> but yeah, not for me. No thanks. <laughs> well, maybe I'll see you all splashing in the Anacostia River in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Bridget. Thank you. That is all for today here on CityCast DC. And if you enjoyed the show, why not tell your friend who is convinced they can swim in the Anacostia? You can leave us a review, rate the show, and subscribe to our morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then.